What's up guys, today we're gonna to be talking about the very basics of HomeKit. Now I made this video about a year ago, maybe longer, but some things have changed with HomeKit over the past year and I thought it was time for an update. This is basically gonna be a crash course on HomeKit and by the end of this video, hopefully you'll have a good understanding of exactly what HomeKit is and how it works. And I'll also discuss why I chose HomeKit personally for my smart home over other platforms. Let's go. Yo, what's up guys? Thanks so much for joining me today. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Shane and this channel is all about building an easy smart home using HomeKit with new videos released every Sunday right here. And in case you missed that, I like to emphasize that easy part here on this channel. If I can figure it out, I know you can figure it out too. So today is the first updated video for my HomeKit 101 series. This will be a playlist here on the channel that'll give you everything you need to know if you are new to HomeKit or building a smart home. So be sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss any of those new videos as they get published. Now I remember when I was first getting started in the smart home world, it was very confusing. What platform to use? Do you need hubs? What works with what? I remember doing a ton of research because I wanted to make sure that I did it the right way and even after all that research, it was still confusing. So this video will be broken into a few parts and I will put chapters down below if you wanna skip around to any specific parts. But essentially we're gonna discuss the basics. What is HomeKit and why I chose it for my smart home, setting up a HomeKit hub so you can control your smart home from anywhere in the world, the different types of HomeKit accessories so, you know, devices may connect via Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Thread, or something entirely different. So we'll discuss what the differences are between all those because that may make a difference. And finally, we'll discuss getting started with the Home app. We'll add a new accessory, create our first HomeKit scene, and our first automation. Okay, so starting off, what is HomeKit and why did I choose it for my smart home? HomeKit is essentially a smart home framework made by Apple that allows you to set up and control all of your smart home devices in one place. For example, I didn't wanna to have to use one app for my garage door and another app for my smart lights. HomeKit solves this. I can buy smart home products from all kinds of different brands, Philips Hue, LifeX, Eve, it doesn't matter. As long as they work with HomeKit, I can control it right from the home app. Now, the home app comes installed on the iPhone, iPad, Mac computers. You can also control your smart home with the Apple Watch, Apple TV, and HomePods. So basically, if you're deep in the Apple ecosystem already, HomeKit may be a good option to consider. You can even create multiple homes in the home app and even invite others to access your home on their devices. This is great for family members or maybe roommates, anyone that you'd like to give access to view and control your smart home accessories. Now HomeKit also gives you the ability to create automations and scenes. For example, a good night scene can close the blinds, turn off the lights, lock the doors, and adjust your thermostat, all with the push of a button or using a Siri voice command. Or you can go even further and have all that happen automatically at a certain time, thanks to automations. We'll talk more about that in a minute. Now, the next big factor in me choosing HomeKit is Apple's stance on privacy. Not all smart home platforms are created equal and they all have different ways of handling privacy. So HomeKit is essentially designed with privacy as a key requirement. With HomeKit, all the communication is end-to-end -end encrypted and sent only between your personal Apple devices and the smart home devices you're trying to control. So this means that there's no need for your smart devices to touch the cloud just in order to do things like turn on your lights. Your data is private, encrypted, and stored on your personal devices, meaning even Apple doesn't have access to look at your cameras, locks, or know when you're turning on and off your lights. Also, when you use Siri, say on a HomePod, that request is associated with a random identifier, not your Apple ID, so your identity is always protected and never known even by Apple. Now there is something called HomeKit Secure Video for your security cameras and even HomeKit enabled routers, all adding even more security and privacy. But we're getting a little ahead of ourselves. We'll discuss HomeKit Secure Video and routers more in depth in some upcoming videos. Now let's talk about hubs. 
So you can use any HomeKit accessory right out of the box with your iPhone, but in order to access and control your devices from anywhere, you will need a HomeKit hub. A HomeKit hub can be any HomePod, an Apple TV, or an iPad that stays at home and connected to your network. The most affordable HomeKit hub currently on the market is the HomePod mini, but like I said, you can use any of the previously mentioned hubs. If you use an Apple TV or an iPad as your HomeKit hub, you may need to toggle that on in the device settings, but if you're using a HomePod, it will automatically be used as a HomeKit hub. So why do you actually need a HomeKit hub? Well, like I said, everything is end-to-end -end encrypted, so when you're away from home and you send a request to let's say unlock the front door, that request is encrypted there on your phone and sent to your HomeKit hub, where it can be processed and then unlock the door. A HomeKit hub is also required to take full advantage of those automations. It's also required to utilize that HomeKit secure video we just mentioned. All your footage is being analyzed and processed there locally in your home and that is all being done by your HomeKit hub. Okay, next let's talk about the different types of devices that you can use with HomeKit. There is a whole list of available products that are supported by HomeKit and I'll link that below, but more important than the actual devices is the way those devices connect to HomeKit. So essentially there are really four different types of HomeKit accessories right now that you can buy. There are Bluetooth accessories, Wi-Fi accessories, bridge accessories, which require an additional hub or bridge, and there are thread devices. And this can make a difference. So I'm gonna discuss each one and kind of share with you the differences just so you're aware of what is what as you're out there buying new HomeKit products for your smart home. So first of all, let's discuss the devices that require an additional bridge or hub. The very popular Philips Hue is a great example. In order to use Philips Hue light bulbs with HomeKit, you have to buy the bridge first. And that bridge usually connects directly to your Wi-Fi router. Often these bridges will need to be wired in by Ethernet, but some bridges may also connect over Wi-Fi. Then the child devices like the Philips Hue bulbs in this example will connect to the Philips Hue bridge using some other type of wireless protocol such as Zigbee. Now in my opinion there are pros and cons with these products that require a bridge or hub. Uh, one plus side is that these devices are usually pretty fast and reliable in my experience. Plus if you have connection issues or if you move something like that, you know, you only have that bridge to troubleshoot or connect to HomeKit and all the child devices will automatically be exposed to HomeKit. The downside of course is that you must buy an additional bridge costing more money and possibly creating more clutter near your router. Now let's talk about Bluetooth devices. These will connect directly to your phone or your HomeKit hub using Bluetooth low energy. These are good because they don't rely on a Wi-Fi connection, making them even more private, and they'll also still work even if Wi-Fi goes down. Bluetooth is low power, so you often see lots of smaller devices like sensors that utilize Bluetooth. The downside is that Bluetooth can often be a little slower and typically has a smaller range than other types of devices. So it's important that your Bluetooth smart home products stay within Bluetooth range of your HomeKit hub in order to maintain a solid connection to HomeKit. Next are Wi-Fi accessories that connect directly to your Wi-Fi network. Now these are pretty common. The good thing about these is that they will have a better range than Bluetooth devices and they connect directly to your network which means you don't need any additional hub or bridge. Now the downside to these is that they are at the mercy of your Wi-Fi network. So it's important to establish a strong Wi-Fi network throughout your home before you get too deep in your smart home journey. And with that said, too many Wi-Fi devices can eventually start to clutter up and possibly bog down your Wi-Fi. It may not seem like it now, but it doesn't take too long for them to add up, especially if you know every light bulb or light switch is connected directly to your Wi-Fi. And the last type of device to discuss here is those that connect via thread. Now this is actually new to HomeKit, so to utilize thread accessories, you will need a HomeKit hub that has thread support, like the HomePod Mini. At the time of recording this video, the HomePod Mini is currently the only HomeKit hub 
that has thread capabilities built in. So for that reason, thread products will also support Bluetooth. That way they still can connect to other HomeKit hubs that don't support thread just yet, like the current Apple TV or the original HomePod. Now thread devices will connect directly to your HomePod mini and all your other thread devices can actually connect together creating a giant mesh. Now this makes thread accessories very fast and reliable and unlike Zigbee or Z-Wave products, thread devices don't require any additional bridge. Like I said, they can connect directly to your HomePod mini. I'm pretty excited to see more HomeKit products that support Thread in the future, and I think Thread will play a big role in the future of Smart Home and HomeKit. We'll dive deeper into Thread in a future video as well, so stay tuned for that. So now that we understand what HomeKit is and the different types of accessories that you can use and how they connect, let's take a closer look at the Home app. So if you've just gotten your first Smart Home accessory, this is likely where you'll start. To add a new accessory, just tap the plus icon at the top and add accessory. Now you can simply scan the HomeKit code on your new device to add it to HomeKit and that's it. From there you'll have options to change the room that you want it to be in or add it to any automations. And from there you can control your new accessory right there in the Home app. And you can also use Siri on any of your Apple products in order to control that device. Now let's look around the Home app a little bit. At the top of the Home tab, you'll see the Status section. You can determine which accessories will show up or not show up here. For example, this may show accessories that are not responding, doors that are open, or maybe lights that are left on. And the Home tab will also contain our favorite scenes and accessories. We'll get back to scenes in a minute. Now the next tab you'll see is the Rooms tab. Now in the Home app, you can organize your home by rooms and you can even create zones that contain multiple rooms like upstairs or downstairs. To jump around to different rooms, just swipe left or right or tap the Home icon up in the corner there to see a full list of all your rooms. So once you have a few accessories, you may want to group them together in a scene. As mentioned earlier, this gives you the ability to control multiple accessories all at once, regardless of what room or zone they're in. So let's create a new scene real quick. First, we'll just tap the plus icon and then tap new scene. Apple will give us a few suggestions, but let's tap custom and I'm gonna name mine good night sleep tight. Next, we'll tap add accessories. I'll choose my back door lock, my front door lock, my kitchen lights, and then maybe a couple of accent lights in my bedroom. Choose done. Now I just wanna make sure the locks are set to lock and the kitchen and living room lights are set to off and I can turn on my bedroom mood lights on real low so that I can see as I go into my room at night. You can choose to add this to your favorites and that's it. All done. So scenes are a great way to control multiple devices in your house. I set up scenes for good morning, going to bed, good night, Christmas time, movie time, lock down the house, all kinds of stuff like that. And moving on, this next tab down here is our automation tab. Now, I absolutely love automations and this is, in my opinion, the main benefit of having a smart home. Let's tap on the plus icon and we can choose the trigger for our new automation. You can set automations to trigger based on people arriving or leaving and even specify which people if you want. You can set automations around the time of day or be triggered by other smart home accessories. And lastly, you can use HomeKit sensors to trigger an automation. All right, so let's create a very basic automation, but one of my favorites. I have a smart bulb in a closet and I also have a door sensor on that closet door. So I want my automation to turn on that smart bulb every time the door is opened and turn it off when the door is closed. So we'll tap a sensor detect something. I'll scroll down and find my closet door. Tap next. I'll choose when the closet door opens and I can even specify further conditions here such as only at night or only when someone is home, but I'll leave those alone for this one. Now I'll look at my closet light, choose next, and make sure it turns on and tap done. Now I'll do the same thing except in reverse so it turns off when the door is closed. I'll scroll down, find my closet door, tap next. I'll choose when the closet closes this time, 
Now I'll look for my closet light again, choose next and make sure it's set to turn off and tap done and that's it. Now our light will go on and off when the door is opened or closed. Automations are a really great way to improve your daily life. I love having certain lights come on automatically in the morning, open up the blinds and even start the coffee pot. You know, get creative and see what you can come up with. HomeKit is a very easy yet powerful smart home platform and I've really enjoyed building my smart home here on this channel with HomeKit. Be sure to check out some of my other videos and don't forget to check out the rest of that HomeKit 101 playlist. If you found this video helpful, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with any of your friends who may also be interested in starting a smart home. I know it can be a little bit intimidating at first, but that's what we're here for. If you have any questions, feel free to drop those down below. Subscribe if you haven't and hit that bell icon so you get notified when we release new HomeKit videos every Sunday right here. And if you want to support this channel and get some cool perks in the process like joining our member only discord group where we talk all things home kit and really try to help each other out consider hitting that join button down below for more information on becoming a channel member for about five dollars a month thanks so much for watching and until next time we'll see y'all later